been discussing about sex related differences in aggression in um, promiscuity in sexual behavior in nurturance caring expression of emotions empathy helping behavior etc and in the last lecture we discussed about um, biological factors that are responsible for these differences uh, the social learning theory which we will be discussing in this particular lecture says that men and women may be exhibiting different behaviors cognition cognitive behavior or social behavior as a result of the uh, difference in socialization that they have undergone or undergone um, culturally socially culturally they have gone through the, the different upbringing that they've had so uh, by according to the theorists who favor this theory uh, biology alone cannot account for these two things one is that over a period of time the sex differences are actually reducing so if you see in case of per performance in mathematics then sex differences have reduced over a period of time moreover there have been cultural differences in um, performances on uh, um, say for instance math so i think we've discussed this in class also in india uh, the sex difference in performance on maths, science, engineering, etc. may not between uh, girls and boys may not be as different because culturally the entire uh, whether you're a boy or your girl parents do emphasize on performing well on subjects like maths and physics and sciences. So, in, so the kind of sex difference in maths performance you may see in Western uh, countries like the uh, like. Um, the United States of America you may not be able to replicate that in India so if if biological factors was the be all and end all of this discussion then you will not you would not have found these sex related uh, uh, cultural differences in or uh, temporal difference in sex related differences now um, social learning theory uh, by, by Bandura and Walters states that basically there are two ways and mechanisms of learning behavior one is behavior is modeled by when i say behavior is modeled means i observe a role model i observe an individual and through observing i learn to behave in the same manner as the person does so if i observe my father's behavior and then my mother's behavior then I am picking up on the, so if I find that my mother is the homemaker and father is, uh, uh, goes out of the house and earns for all of us, then probably I will, ex I will imbibe and internalize that and learn and present that in my own behavior when I may feel uh, less motivated to, uh, to have a career and more motivated to be a homemaker just like my mother. So this is uh, one way and second and uh, important and second very important thing is that um, I all not only do I observe the behavior I also observe what is the response that others are uh, giving to this particular behavior. So is the behavior being positively evaluated? Is it being punished? Is it being rewarded? Is it being negatively evaluated? So the kind of reinforcement that I see that this role model is getting for his behavior can affect whether I replicate, whether I present that behavior in my own repertoire, in my own, um, uh, you know, my own uh, thinking, feeling, emotion, my own behavior or not. So, um, uh, for instance, let's take this example. If you see a boy uh, watches um, an action movie and sees that males are very aggressive, that males, uh, that there is a hero in the movie and the hero is trying to protect the heroine and in protecting the heroine, the hero uh, fights with the, the villain of the, the, sh the movie. Now, what the boy, pick up when, when a very young boy will pick up from this movie is that, that um, boys are supposed to, in quotes, protect women and aggression is, is acceptable way of uh, responding as a man. So, also... What they'll find is that when this boy picks up and uh, uh, this behavior that this boy starts hitting others in the family or younger sister, so there may be the the this kind of behavior may be more tolerated by the parents because boys will leave boys and boys are aggressive or isko gussa bahut jaldi aata hai 
but they might find it cute they might find they might, they may realize that they're laughing about uh, over it or they may be not taking it seriously may not be checking that behavior and in this way males turn, tend to become more aggressive through socialization more than testosterone or you know functional or structural differences in the brains of males and females now uh, conditions that will influence observational learning first there should be a positive relationship between the observer and the model i should be positively evaluating the person that i'm trying to copy so the i will try to copy the hero and not the villain i will try to copy my father or my mother or people who um i i have a that i that i hold in high regard second is that uh, if the model's behavior so if i see um uh in the movie let's say if i see that uh the aggression that the hero was uh, showing that has led for him that women don't find this aggression to be cute women don't find this aggression to be so in a, a kabir singh kind of a movie the very fact that we saw how everyone around him was um, you know when he would become extremely aggressive person the girl likes it that he was protective aggressive with her the the, the girl is not of course the, the whole point is he is a hero and he is everyone around him is romanticizing the aggression that he is displaying and it's not being checked so instead of presenting him as an obnoxious person who everyone begins to ignore because of his aggressive uh, issues you actually show him as a hero so um model should be in position of power model should be of same sex and behaves in a gender congruent way so males will look at males and follow that kind of behavior but males will not of course try to copy what females are doing so th- uh, these are some of the conditions in which on observational learning takes place now um a study examined the effect of non traditional roles so they uh, did an uh, did a longitudinal study in which 10 year olds were shown uh 10 um, year old who were involved in uh, counter stereotypical activities so counter stereotypical activity would be that these 10 year old ma- boys and girls are not conforming to their uh, the gendered stereotype activity so you might find uh the uh, a girl a 10 year old girl to be involved in football to be involved in a lot of sporty activities in general which is something that you consider to be uh, um, the boys games and uh, secondly you might find boys who may be interested in let's say cooking as 10 year old that they might be helping their mothers out in the kitchen so uh, uh what they found was that later on these kids grow up to have less traditional attitudes towards gender and they're actually going to be scoring better in those subjects that are deemed more appropriate for the other sex so you may think maths home science is a paper for girls and maths is a subject for uh, boys but these kids who were y- at a young age displaying non traditional behavior they go on, go on to actually hold non traditional attitudes later on in life also and they go on to score better in those subjects that are deemed to be uh, more appropriate for the other sex um secondly uh, uh you'd find the there's a very there's a huge influence of uh, media so in media uh, or in your neighborhood or in your family if you tend to see more non traditional uh, 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 gendered stereotyped Uh, e- exhibition of behavior so you might find fathers who are working from home fathers who are changing their nappies of their kids or father who are who are cooking and mothers who are probably uh, going out earning coming back and father serving them food so those children who grow up to uh, view or to observe such non traditional family dynamics they are n- males in such kind of circumstances are again going to exhibit more of Uh, uh less of uh, gender stereotype behavior and more of nurturance and empathy and caring so uh they've also uh, suggest that as women become more involved in sports even sex differences in spatial skills could become lesser um reinforcement uh as you already understand um people are less tolerant of males exhibiting cross sex behavior so males acting boys acting like girls is less tolerated than girls acting like boys 
now the thing is that um the what does it suggest so you might see that uh for me women acting like boys it's considered to be a very positive thing ki tu meri ladki tu meri beti nahi tu mera beta hai and um khub ladni mardani jhansi ki rani so these are examples of where we have positively evaluated masculine characteristics in women however uh feminine characteristics in women so if you think to uh if you try to associate feminine characteristic with every any man it is not a compliment it is actually an abuse so if you say ki especially you might have seen some things like churi pehen ke to ghar pe baith jao so you are basically using feminine characteristics as an abuse that goes on to reflect the deep seated misogynistic values that our society holds and um passes on to the next generation so uh, aggression is one behavior that is less tolerated in women than in men so unconsciously teachers parents neighbors uh, those around you may actually be reinforcing aggression in males male children and uh, uh, punishing aggression in female children even in homes you'll find a, ch- a girl who is not soft spoken a girl who cusses or girl who ta- talks loudly ladkiyon ko gaali nahi deni chahiye ladkiyon ko itna chillana nahi chahiye ladkiyon ko itna aggressive nahi hona chahiye uh, because and especially relating it to your marriage the consequences later on when you get married to someone that an aggressive woman is would be considered to be would be more negatively evaluated of course compared to an aggressive man so um uh gender role socialization now gender role socialization talks about how we have through socialization processes and when i mean socialization processes i mean through interactions with beginning with the immediate family members my siblings my parents moving on to the neighborhood to the the media to my schools to college to to my the newspapers around me to the magazines around me everything that i read so i am as an individual the child as he's growing up he picks up these roles how males are exhibited how ma- females are presented in the media will influence how i believe i as a female should behave and how i as a male should behave so uh so uh, agents in the environment encourage women to be communal and men to be agentic something like uh one of the basic differences that people believe between man and woman is that a man is independent a uh, man is powerful a woman is passive dependent and nurturant and is more oriented and should be more oriented towards the relationships um an important part is that while uh, gender role socialization may not necessarily contribute to actual sex difference they it may lead to appearance of sex difference now go back to um, when we discussed the difference in sexuality uh, amongst males and females now uh, if you ask a question from men and women um, you know um, do you watch porn do you masturbate or how many sexual partners do you have so in these kind of questions men are likely to respond uh, with higher frequency than women now if you change the conditions one is you let the answers be anonymous and second you tell um, all the uh, participants that you have um, put a lie detector test in place and um, all the lies can be caught of course this is a pseudo information which means that you have th- it's called a bogus pipeline technique as we have we probably studied in last lecture so book in this uh, in these conditions one is where you have not given any information second is you ask them to report anonymously and third is the bogus pipeline where you uh, tell them that there is a lie detector test but of course there is nothing like that now what they find is uh, sex differences reduce uh, from a non so sex differences are lesser in the second case which is when you're reporting anonymously and even lesser when you are in the bogus pipeline condition thereby stating that perhaps there are not genuine sex differences the reporting is what is different so men report to be more aggressive than women men report to be more sexual than women and women report to be 
uh, more nurturant and empathetic compared to men but that may not be the case so gender role socialization may not always lead to genuine sex differences but may lead to want the need to present yourself in a gender appropriate manner uh sex ref- uh, related differences in expression of emotions so you can see how we are so- how boys are socialized into being assertive but an assertive woman is very negatively evaluated she has not she doesn't know her place she's too much she's uh, too out there she's too bossy she's too bitchy so you'll find uh, boys who are assertive to be very positively evaluated whereas the same uh, uh, in the in the same uh, uh, you know the same behavior for women may be evaluated as neg- negatively and you may call it to be very aggressive so um similarly when you talk about girls nurturant behavior in girls so through, you can go ahead and check out so many movies in which the woman saves the man through her tender love care affection looks after the man and um, looks after the relationships basically does a lot of uh, pro bono therapeutic work for men and there are uh, these posts uh, these very funny posts online that would uh, say something on the lines of how women are not rehabilitation centers for badly raised men unfortunately there is a lot of um pressure there's a lot of growing up with women have to be should be nurturant and good women are nurturant and if you so uh, if a woman um selects her career over her children staying at home with her children so she will be harshly more harshly evaluated than a man who goes off to work leaving his child behind uh women in general are uh, socialized into expressing more emotions than men but even when it comes to emotions women are more comfortable are socialized into being comfortable with expressing emotions such as sadness because sadness is considered to be something that can protect relationships so if i am even if i'm angry with someone i may become indirect passive aggressive may sulk or may become sad as a woman because i have not been because i have been socialized to not express anger because anger is destructive for relationship and sadness can help pe- people come together share care ask um, and therefore be um, uh, more positive emotion for maintaining emotion uh, maintaining relationships uh conversely males are asked to control feelings that are suggestive of vul- vulnerabilities like sadness and low status and uh, whereas anger is something that um, alpha behavior so alpha behavior is showing a lot of aggressive behavior because why because this leads to higher status or, or at least that's what pe- boys are socialized into believing so when people say girls are very emotional they tend to only focus on one emotion which is sadness if you see anger is also an emotion and anger is an emotion which we encourage men to directly aggress through sending through those messages through socialization processes and messages in the society uh influence of parents now um associating pink for girls and blue for boys starts very very early in fact it starts in the womb itself the kind of clothes that your child is wearing the kind of toys that your child is uh playing with the kind of stories that you're telling your child um fairy tale stories for example so all of these um um your conscious and unconscious behavior is l- leading for is is related to uh boys and girls growing up very early with social uh with gender stereotypical uh behavior so um uh, b- uh, many many parents in fact say that they do not uh, um uh, discourage um or uh, they do not discourage their boys from playing with toys that may not be appropriate for boys and girls from so what are uh, first of all let's talk about what are the appropriate toys for boys trains cars uh, machines building blocks and for girls we always tend to stick with dolls so what if there is a girl who wants to play with machines guns uh, would you be comfortable with that as a parent and what if your child male 
child wants to play with dolls would you be comfortable with that they may want to nurture the doll may want may show a lot of care for the doll feeding him uh, just behaving like the way he may have seen his uh, mother behave towards him would uh, would the parents be comfortable in this setting so many parents report that they do not um, uh, discourage their children from uh, you know playing with toys that may not be appropriate gender stereotypical however uh, if you were to observe uh, when children were asked how their parents would react to them playing with specific toys many of the parents uh, uh, a majority indicated that parents would not would only approve of sex type toys which means they, the the children reported that 90% of children reported that their parents will not be comfortable with them playing with the girls playing with machines and boys playing with dolls uh boys are also more physically punished than girls so it's very again something ki ladkiyon pe haath nahi uthate hain but ladkon ko hum peet sakte hain again you become a role model where girls uh, you discourage girls from ever hitting and you encourage inadvertently end up encouraging boys to use physical aggression um another interesting research found that mothers will spend more time watching boys and more time actively in, uh, involved with girls so when you're watching your male child and when you're actively involved with your girl child one of the things that you may be um uh, communicating is that the boys are independent and can do things on their own and the girls are dependent and cannot handle their own life and cannot do things on their own uh, thereby uh, socialize thereby um, you know communicating to girls the, uh, the the need to be passive and dependent and communicating the boys the need to be independent um an interesting study uh, there are many many studies that are trying to examine the social cognitive implications of playing with the kind of toys that children play with at young uh, very uh, early in life now um playing with dolls involves a lot of vocalization and verbalization uh, talking to the doll um, taking care of the doll uh, whereas when you play with machines when you play with building blocks it involves more of your spatial skills so it has been hypothesized that is it the different nature of toys that uh, boys and girls are ex- uh, subjected to early on in life that leads to later on sex differences in verbal abilities and cognitive abilities such as spatial ability but um, another uh, you know aspect to this is perhaps children who are already better at spatial ability or who are already who already have better verbal abilities may be choosing these particular toys irrespective um of their gender books now this is very important a lot of us have grown up girls have grown up with fairy tales and so what do what are fairy tales like cinderella sleeping beauty and snow white teach you overall if we see the prince charming is going to save you um you cannot save your own self you uh, have to be passive you have to be gullible you have to be vulnerable you have to be obedient and above all you have to be beautiful to deserve love of a rich handsome prince also you will find nursery rhymes in which females are depicted as quiet sweet maids crying and running away from spiders whereas males are shown as kings and thieves and butcherers and adventurers so um i think fairy tales at least there's a lot of work being done on how these fairy tales the tv shows the early um, uh, you know presentations of uh, serials tv shows and serials this may we see how men are behaving how women are behaving and then we tend to expect these so when someone says that okay kabir singh is just a movie it is not just a movie you are communicating to a a uh, very young vulnerable crowd that it is okay for a man to hit a woman in fact it's not okay it may be romantic and there have been cases where women have reported fantasizing about having a boyfriend like kabir singh because what kabir singh and that girl in the movie had i mean i i don't even remember her name goes on to show how 
insignificant her character was in that movie how i mean so her life does not matter her uh, 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 career does not matter what matters is that she is the an object uh, of interest to the central character that we are interested in so these relationships we pick up especially this is an abusive relationship that we pick up we internalize and we then tend to project on our relationships later in life now um look at the tv scripts uh this is a this is a um table that's there in your book book and you'll find um this these are very stereotypical heterosexual script scripts in uh, many tv shows sex is defining component of masculinity women are passive in sexual relations so for a man to have too many sexual relationship is it's considered to be a positive thing the man is a stud but similar women would not be considered a woman to be of a bad character um uh, men initiate courtship behavior women do not initiate they are passive they are dominant and powerful uh, women are often um, uh, indirect strategies they'll use they women are valued for their appearance men will be valued for their wealth power and strength and women uh, commitment men will avoid commitment and emotional attachment women need a man to be fulfilled so go back and check out all the tv shows that you've seen since childhood and you'd realize a lot of your learning about men and women has come from how books tvs advertisements uh, have presented masculinity and femininity so um if we think if we look at some of the researches and advertisements 72% per- of radio ads were males males are more likely than females to have authority roles and females are more likely than males to be product users this is important so the products that are being sold are for women but they are being maybe sold by the males who are in authority position so um uh, advertisements will continue to show women and men in stereotypical ways Uh, what are the stereotypical ways for babies pink and blue are cues for clues for gender men are portrayed as athletic strong typically outdoors and often involved in sto- sports so um i i if we were in class i would have probably asked you to think about the different uh, advertisements especially the advertisements that are uh, if not gender stereotypical then many times actually going ahead and showing men and women in very very sexist manner so you'll find women to be nagging housewives um you will find uh, women to uh, you know uh, n- not be intelligent not be very bright um you'll find the cars especially uh, advertisements for cars will be those that are going to attract men by that you can uh, so s- selling a car the do you know that these advertisements have been made for men and not for women so um let's look at examine the sexist advertisements of uh, uh, fair and lovely so you presenting a woman to be an absolute um, inferior person because of her skin color and the moment she changes her skin color she gets to have a groom she gets to mar- gets to marry a man and therefore raising her status these used to be the kind of advertisements we used to see and even now till date some radio advertisements that come about are so very sexist and cringe worthy and it's it's quite a surprise it comes as quite a surprise for me that even in today's times they have the audacity to run sexist scripts like that so um um again you may have seen advertisements for men's perfumes which show women in such derogatory manner so uh you you'll find these women to somehow lose all sense of their self and because they because of the perfume that you put on uh women in all advertisements are treated as sex objects so there is something called facism and bodyism facism means the ratio uh, so if you compare your face to body ratio uh is what stands out so for men their face to body ratio in 
advertisements is higher than women so women's bodies are shown much more than their faces and men's faces are shown much more than bodies what is the implication of this the implication is that face is supposed to communicate intelligence and bodies are supposed to communicate sexuality sensuality and sexuality so um continuously using women as sex objects to sell products to other men especially that you know if you buy a product you'll get a girlfriend um and uh, so you have an ice cream ad that is using very skimpily clad women for what for selling at the end of the day um uh, finally so we are we're going to end this lecture uh, gender socialization lecture today but there is just so much to be spoken in this area there is just so much so much to be you know uh, discussed because the moment what gender role socialization tells you is that you have to start reflecting on your families uh, the kind of communication that you're receiving the movies that you watch the tv shows that you're seeing and sometimes it's um not a very comfortable thing to do because you have to call out the movies that you've loved you have to call out the songs that you've been seeing so something like um uh, some of the songs if you see are so sexist ki tu ha kar ya na kar tu hai meri kiran it actually sh- communicates i used to really like the song but as i grew up i understood that it com- it's communicating that girls have no con- value their opinion they they don't have to consent and a man can overtake you or can dominate you and your opinion does not matter so many movies many tv shows many books that you may have loved as a child including your fairy tales you come to realize that they were so toxic for your upbringing as a human being and this is true for both men and women so we are getting all these messages from all these places that are Uh, counterproductive to our well-being and are leading to the problem of gender in our society so i hope after this lecture you will spend at least some time reflecting on the messages that you're receiving and the reflecting on the messages that you're giving to your to the people around you um the sexism in it the gender stereotyped messages that you're adhering to and um perhaps change will begin from there after that reflection